people uh, I am not ready so let me give everyone uh, vertigo and epilepsy <sighs> and where is all right so we need a power bank I need a iPhone cable so my phone doesn't go dead let's get that from out here thank you Kristen there's the kitten He's alive and well. Yeah, buddy. Expensive boy. <laughs> Worth it. Oh, I turned the thing upside down. I probably paused the stream. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Table power loops for the win, Leafy says. Awesome. In uh, Joshua's stream. Scream. Yeah, great. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Come on. Get it together, Siati. Get it together. We're getting there. We're getting there. I see a massive droner question. Uh, I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna get there. Yeah, right, pets equal instant thumbs up. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. All right, so let me get over to my, oh God. Inception, streamception. All right, and I'm gonna roll up to the top of the comments here as I always do. And then, uh, you know, it'll take me like a half an hour to get caught up. You guys know what's up. I am getting this power bank plugged into my phone because I stream from the phone and it annihilates the battery's face. There we go. All right, cool. So we got that. Let's get you guys pointing the right direction up in here. You know what? Let me turn some lights on. So we'll make it a little cooler looking over there. Hang on one second, people. La 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 shutting one door so that Kristen doesn't stab me in the eye as she should. Let's turn on a light over here, light over there, make it look fancy. Cause that's what you guys deserve. You guys deserve the fanciness, the purity. Alright. I think those are all the buttons and switches that I need to hit. Um, I'm also going to be eating. I have to eat or I'll die. I had 10,000 things to do. Um, all right, let me take a bite. Ow. All right. Bopper, bopper, bopper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, all right. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Chewing, chewing, chewing. All right, Marcos. Marcos just built a massive droner, two and a half inch. Why don't worry about motors? You got some really good, really good options. Um, first one being the RCX 1304. Um, the only problem with this motor is 5,000 kV. You want to run this on 4S. Um, the only problem with this motor is you got to order it from MyRC Mart, and, uh, you're going to either pay $25 in shipping to get it, like, overnighted or two-dayed, uh, or you're going to pay $10 in shipping, and you're going to wait. <laughs> you're going to wait, like, two to three weeks for it. Closer to two weeks. Um, but... Or get a whole bunch of them, or do a big order, because Meyer C Mart has some really good stuff. Um, they have some really unique stuff on their website. Um, so I would actually recommend that, man. Do it. Do like a big order on their website. Get your friends together. Get a bunch of people, um, and do one big order with them, because then the twenty five dollars shipping is a really good deal. Uh, but yeah, their uh, their thirteen oh fours here are fantastic for two and a half inch props. Uh, if you get the five thousand kV version and run them on four S. Uh, and then uh, they also have a 1306, which looks a little something like this. I thought I had an extra one floating around. I guess not. Um, it's on a rig somewhere over here. I think this is the one. Yeah, this is the one. Um, so this is their 1306, which is also really good. Um, this 1306 4000 is a three inch prop motor. Uh, one of my favorites actually. As long as it's a light inch three inch lightweight three inch rig, 
Um, this guy here is 140 something grams and another 60 or so with a battery. Um, and these motors are great on here. Um, man, questions are rolling in like crazy. Let me start blasting through these questions a little faster than usual. I like to hem and haw and get into super duper details. Um, it, but in terms of two and a half inch props, the, the end of my answer is gonna be, uh, if you don't wanna wait for my RC Mart, go get the Spintech uh, 1304s. Uh, they have different KVs. They have like a, uh, a 4,000 for uh, 5S. I think they have like a 6,000, which you could even run on 3S. Um, so yeah, th those would be a good choice. And then there's also some 1404s uh, that would be good as well. Just pay attention to the KV. On a two and a half inch prop, you want, um, you want, oh Christ, I lost my train of thought. You want <laughs> 5,000 KV on 4S, um, or you want 6,000 to 6,500 KV on 3S. All right, so there you go, Mar uh, Marcos. Great question. Let's get caught up on chat. Uh, uh, if you start eating, I leave. Oh, man, Cohen. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> you don't want me to die on the stream, do you? Uh, all right, what else do we have? I'm in, up a bit. Hi. <laughs> Take your time. Peace for you, Austria FPV. Very cool. Much appreciated, Stefan. Uh, hello from California. Hello, sun at the beach. I am jealous of you. Uh, Wizard X220. I have not had any experience with pre, uh, uh, um, ready to fly five inch rigs, but people that I trust say that the Wizard is a decent enough starting point. Um, if you can stack up a little bit more money, I think there are some better options, which um, Joshua Bardwell has talked about ad nauseum on his channel, um, such as things like the Hawk 5. Um, but, uh, if you're really trying to keep the cost down, I've heard that the wizard is a good starting spot. And then you can just, I think Rotor Riot actually has a series, how to take the wizard and upgrade it, uh, to get better performance out of it. That's a good way to kind of learn to learn, you know, it, it comes pre-built. So you see where all the wires go essentially, and then you can upgrade piece by piece. Um, the only problem with that is the, the components that you're left over from, with, from the wizard that you re replace with better ones. There's not a whole lot that you can do with them. So, I mean, there's something to be said about spending a little bit more money so that you get components that um, you can uh, reuse or, you know, put into a different build. Or maybe you don't even need to change them at all. Uh, so, but yeah, no wrong answers. I, I don't think that's one of the, you know, rigs that is going to be a total waste. So that's a good thing. Let me plug my um, Patreon that you wonderful people in the community uh, brow beat me into creating. I'm dropping it into the chat right now. Um, everybody that pushed me to do that, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, much, much appreciated. And uh, I'm going to try to bring some really cool stuff over there. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. I have it set up exactly like Joshua, where, you know, three bucks gets you in the door, and then there's different tiers five, ten, twenty, uh, forty two dollars, uh, fifty. Uh, for, um, well, the $50 one gets you my cell phone number in, in case you're really having issues. Um, but all the rest of them just, you know, if you think I'm, uh, putting up content that's worth five bucks a month, awesome. 10 bucks a month, even cooler. 20 bucks a month, you're a baller. Um, so that's how I have it set up. You know, I don't want to uh, keep the, the content away from everybody. Um, but I think three bucks a month is, is a fair, um, Hey, thanks for what you're doing. Keeps me motivated, which is really the big thing. Um, you know, I, this is a hobby through and through for me. Um, so there are times where I just won't do anything FPV related for a week or two, um, which sometimes also kind of is caused by some mental illness things that, uh, I deal with, um, in depression and anxiety. So Having the Patreon, having some folks um, kicking a few dollars at me um, really has already kept me kind of motivated and, and dragged me out of some uh, some uh, tailspins. So, uh, yeah, much appreciated. You guys rule. Back to the chat. I figured I'd give you guys my stupid face. Nobody make fun of my beard. I had a bad experience. I had an accident when I was... Uh, <laughs> when I was... Um, 
freehand shaving my face the other day, and then I put the the guard on the um, I put the guard on my shaver a little too low. Whatever, it'll grow back. I look stupid right now. You guys got to see it. I'm not gonna show it again. Opinion on Monda, Mamba F4. Wait, let me make sure that uh, I didn't do anything. Mic's fine. Just turn your YouTube up. What do you mean the mic? What's happening? Yeah, I gotta use the mic and the phone. Uh, let me do this. Let me turn the phone around. How bad is it, guys? You're farther from the mic now. Read this. Um, let me try this. Let me spin the uh, <laughs> hundred bucks. Can we go eat your place? Absolutely. Fifty bucks for those digits. Yeah. Oh man, the orientation is locked. All right, so the orientation is locked. I can't. I can't turn the mic towards myself. All right, so that's a good uh, lesson learn, learned for me on this one. I need to have the phone rotated so that the uh, the bottom is facing towards me. Um, yeah, I'll figure something out. All right, I'll, and I'll also stay closer to the mic. You guys are right. All right, cool. So I'll stay closer to the mic. Thank you guys for the feedback. Much appreciated. That is super duper helpful. Um, I am just figuring this all out. All right, it's okay now because I'm sitting up close to the uh, close to the desk. I guess when I sat back to talk to you guys, I was too far away. Um, so that's good. All right, I missed a question or two. I need to start blasting through them. Um, if I don't answer your question fully, ask it again. I'm going to rapid fire these questions. Ready, guys? Ben Jacobs, opinion on Mamba F405 mini stack. Is it worth 40? Wow, 40 bucks. Is that 40 bucks for the flight controller and the ESC? If it is, shit. I mean, just do it. That's really cheap. Um, uh, yeah, damn, that's, that's really, really cheap. I don't love the, the pre-built mini stacks cause they tend to pin the flight controller to the ESC. Um, but at that price, I would say, give it a shot. If not, you can spend a little bit more money on a, um, Speedix GS40 ESC, which is my favorite. I'm sorry, GS25 ESC. Um, that's my preferred ESC. I think it's 45 bucks. Um, and then a, a Talon flight controller for 32 bucks. Uh, Talon F7 with the MPU 6000. Uh, currently running my micro, Zachary Chaffin, Chaffin says, currently running micro on 357. Would you update to the nose version of leaving where it is? Absolutely. Um, Betaflight 4.0 is fantastic. If your build is clean, it'll work absolutely fine. Uh, if you don't like it, there's a, a chunk of uh, text you can dump into the CLI that's available in the Betaflight 4 tuning guide on the internet uh, that will turn it into 3.5. So there's really no reason not to, to up, update to 4.0. Give it a shot. If it works, it'll fly better. If it doesn't work, you can just zap it right back to 3.57 with the CLI um, and you're golden. If What I will say though is if, if 4.0 doesn't work for you on a micro, um, keep focusing on the build itself. It will work. I, I, I've yet to have a problem personally, but I build very clean and with good soft mounting on the flight controller. Um, I talk a lot about that over on the Patreon page. So um, for three bucks a month, you can get the inside scoop on my secrets on the little things here and there that I do um, to keep a, uh, to get a micro to fly well. Uh, Ty K is looking for recommendations for ducted 1S or 2S whoops for indoor racing. Pipe Dream is something that will also work for outdoors. Ty K, you and everybody else have that pipe dream, myself included. Um, I don't think it's ever going to work. To fly inside, it has to be very light and very low power. Uh, and then to fly outside, it's got to be very high power. Um, so I, I think there's, I think 1S whoops are for inside. Uh, and then if for some reason you need to have a whoop outside rather than just like a regular two inch, you know, shrunken down five inch build, you know, without ducts and a carbon frame, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you're going to have a separate rig that's 2S or 3S for that. Um, I don't, I, I've not kept up with whoops, admittedly. Uh, I did just get a newbie drone tester for their new brushless board and brushless motors and whatnot. Um, but I haven't been able to fly it yet because the receiver failed immediately. But uh, there's lots of good whoop info out there. There's a couple Facebook groups with tons of whoop info. I would just jump in there and, and take a look. Or just buy whatever tinywhoop.com sells or newbie drone sells. Um, those guys sell the highest end whoop parts and pre-built whoops that you can get. So you cannot go wrong with either one of those websites. 
Uh, how to get VFast sensor to work? Asks uh, Nabi Kaziaka. Uh, you gotta give me more. In I'll try to help you out. Cohen Spat sounds like eating to me. <laughs> Come on, Kyle, don't throw me under the bus. <laughs> Kyle, okay, nice. Not showing up on QX7. Oh, VFAS isn't showing up on your QX7? Oh my God, that is a deep, dark hole. So here's what I'm gonna recommend, Nabi. Uh, look up uh, on YouTube telemetry. Do a search for like telemetry and Bardwell. He's gonna have some content on it. Also, um, uh, uh, Oscar Liang has some really good uh, content articles on his website on getting the telemetry to work, um, which includes the VFAST sensor. Um, so start reading up on that. It, it can be a pain in the ass to get that working. I'll, I'll be real honest. But those two guys have you covered. They're actually who I turn to <laughs> to get it working. Um, so I'm not good enough at getting the telemetry working to help you out properly. Um, so I'll send you to where I go to get it working properly because those two guys will definitely hook you up. Um, Marcos, okay, sounds good to me. I have 1106 Emacs and they got hot. Yeah, 1106 Emacs are not my favorite for um, for two and a half inch props um, or any props for that matter. I, I don't think an 1106 makes any sense. I think a 1304, uh, 1404, much better option for a two and a half inch prop. Um, LS, yeah, LSF rig, nice, Jamie. <laughs> LSF 3-inch. There we go. Little Stellar Fox 3-inch. Perfect. Uh, Kyle says, it's good drone. but was uh, kind of last year's drone. Replaceable arms is great from starting. So we're cheaper. Nice. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, good info from Kyle on the, uh, I believe he was talking about the wizard. Rob's FPV. That's how I read it. Uh, house blog. Larva X. Just to see if I want to play with the smaller quads. Had a difficult to find. Some useful kind of opinions of micros. Streams are helping that direction. Thanks, House Blog. Much appreciated. I'm going to try my best to be exactly that for you guys. Um, Ty K, or no, Mike says to Ty, check out the iFlight. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Guillermo, what is this? Indonesia. Hi, CID. What opinions do you have on the biggest motors that I have for 9mm motor mounting? Wait, what? What options do I have for the biggest motors that have. Oh, I got you. I got you. Stuck with the frame. Uh, biggest motors that'll mount nine by nine. That's actually a really good question. Uh, uh, that's a really good question. I think it's gonna, I don't know. Let me look around. Damn, that's a good one. That's such like a simple question, but, um, like I said, a really good one. I think it's gonna be 1306. Yeah, I think the RCX and uh, Emacs 1306s Wait a second. The Emaxes might not. Um, Emaxes might not be nine by nine. Let me see. I have them over. Here. Wait, no. I have them over somewhere. Uh, here they are. Let me see. Emaxes are. Ah! Emaxes are. They are nine by nine. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like thirteen oh six. Um, either the Emax or the uh, RCX. Uh, off the top of my head, those are the biggest 9x9 mount motors that uh, that I can think of. So, there you go. Great question, though. Great, great, great question. Uh, you almost had me stumped there. <laughs> uh, wizards aren't bad. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, Guillermo, the Nazgul. What about the Nazgul, Guillermo? Um... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Ken, the frame now has a name. Believe it or not, Ken Simmons asks, "When is your frame coming out?" Um, so the frame, I, this isn't uh, this particular version of it isn't going to be mine um, per se. Uh, I'm going to have a special edition of this frame coming soon, but I've done a lot of the um, a lot of the development and tweaking on it. Um, it's basically what you're looking at here. With um, it's going to have widened front standoffs um, to clear the bottoms of cameras a little bit better. Um, it's going to be a removable arm, squished X 3 inch. Uh, it'll be a perfect fit for the Tarsier and the um, Tarsier, as you can see here, fits really well, uh, as well as the uh, the new run cam dual lens setup that's coming, which is going to be hopefully just game changing. Um, but yeah, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to be called, it's made by Rotorius, um, R O T O R I O U S, and uh, it's going to be called the Ripper DX. Uh, the the initial owner of Rotorius was an awesome guy by the name of Jack. 
So, um, and this is, this was his, creating this into a removable arm setup um, was his design. So uh, Jack the Ripper, it's sort of an homage to him, calling it the Ripper. And then DX is uh, a nod to his son, uh, whose name is Dax or Dex. Um, so yeah, th this, pretty much this exact frame here with the front standoffs moved out a little bit um, and some other tweaks here and there is gonna be called the Rotorious Ripper. Um, I still don't know when it's gonna be out. Hopefully two or three weeks, uh, I'm still bugging um, Eckhart, who is the main guy uh, of Rotorious to, uh, to get it finished up. He's working on a lot of different stuff. He's got his uh, work cut out for him right now. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for that. If you absolutely have to get something right now, the, uh, uh, the X Hover B-roll is pretty slick. Um, I don't know, there's a couple different options out there um, that uh, can get you by if you can't wait the couple weeks. But uh, thanks for asking about it, Ken. I appreciate that. Very cool of you. Uh, okay, 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 good. Mac, Mac, I, hey man, what's up? RB, hey, what's up? Mm, Haw, net your working area. What? Guillermo, are you saying my working area is dirty? Yes, it is. Indonesia, Australia, I think 1206 is the biggest. Oh, yeah, Mark, uh, Marco, Halak, great point. 1206, yeah. Uh, 1206 is also available with 9mm mount pattern, but I like the 1306 is better. Uh, all right. Converved Kyle K. Okay, great. Uh, laugh out loud at the $50, $50 tier. You got it, Kyle. I had to throw something in there fun. Can't imagine anybody would ever do it. Uh, damn, now that's a Patreon reward house blog. Yeah, right, man. <laughs> My phone number is... Uh, I don't know. It's a little scary to. I don't know what I'll do if if anybody actually does that tier. I don't. I don't know if I'll like refund them, or but uh, I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah, Guillermo, with a hundred bucks, you can absolutely come eat at my place if you're in uh, Atlanta for sure. Um, <laughs> Jamie, fifty bucks for them digits. Yep. Uh, Ty, check it out, Mike. I could good. You guys are doing awesome talking to each other in the chat. You guys rule. Um, <laughs> Jamie will sell them for 48 bucks. Oh man, I'm getting, uh, <laughs> I'm getting low bidded. 50 bucks pizza for a week. <laughs> well, nice FPV freaky. Um, uh, all right. And this is when the sound went to hell farther from the mic. Now read this, uh, RB, uh, I'm intrigued. Hit me with your DVR question, pal and TSC. I might, uh, I might be able to help. No promises. Uh, I absolutely do need an arm-mounted mic. Um, that's one of the things that the uh, the Patreon bucks will go towards, getting this streaming set up a little bit better for you guys. Um, the, the whole Patreon thing has nothing to do with me wanting to make a living off of FPV. Um, it is just subsidizing the cost of the hobby uh, and what I'm going to be doing here. So, I mean, every dollar of that is going to go into this setup to hopefully give you guys better stuff, give, give you guys better content and cooler stuff to watch and enjoy and blah, 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 blah. Uh, all right. What else do we have? Germ 357, getting some high throttle oscillations in my three inch build. TPA, still, TPA settings, still the best to get rid of it for sure, Germ. Um, if that is the only problem, absolutely go nuts with the TPA. Um, I think the, f the factory setting is 1500 is the threshold um you know mess around with that maybe drop the, push that threshold up to like 1800 and, and see if it just gets it up there and move that um multiplier up i think it's like 0.5 move it up to like 0.8 um there's some info on the betaflight 4 tuning guide about tpa as well because they changed the way tpa works um so lots of good info there great question great 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 question uh motor recommendation for bqe rip squeak three inch and also the driblet uh, kind FPV with a good question as well. All right, so you do. I, so you guys are staring at me actually doing something. I'm gonna start this build. Um, actually, no, I'm not. I'm gonna take another bite of this burrito. Sorry, guys. Mm-hmm. 
Still chewing. Always chew your food enough, everybody, or you can choke and die. Nobody wants that. All right. What was the question? <laughs> uh, rip squeak three inch. Okay. Kind FPV. Great question. Three inch propellers, in my opinion, need minimum a 1306. Um, that is the minimum size motor, in my opinion, to be able to really turn those props um, with enough authority to get you a good pit tune and something that reacts really quickly. But the 1306s are only really going to work on a lightweight, like this one, um, three inch build. If, uh, and, and when I say that, what I mean is an all up weight around 180 to 200 grams. If you're 200 grams plus, you're going to want to start jumping up in motor size. We're talking 1407, we're talking 1506, 1507. Um, they're going to do better on the heavier weight, uh, like such as the Acrobrat, uh, which is, you know, 250, 260 grams all up. Um, those bigger motors are going to be required to really move that around comfortably, in my opinion. You're looking for 4,000-ish uh, kV, 4,000 to like 4,300 kV or so. Um, and then for the driblet, go with, with uh, Drew's motors. Go with the uh, the drib motors. Uh, those are going to be a, a perfect match for you. I have them floating around here somewhere. Uh, they are 1104. They're a true 1104. Most other 1104s out there, if you measure the stator, it's actually a five millimeter tall stator, so they're actually an 1105. But um, the uh, yeah, Drew's uh, drib motors are um, I don't know. I guess they're called driblet motors. I forget. Um, but yeah, they're a true 1104, 7500 kV. Run those on 3S, and that uh, driblet will be fire. That's Drew's setup as well. Uh, Mindstream says, hope you're feeling okay now. I appreciate that, Mindstream, very much. I am. Hope you are as well. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Awesome. Thanks, Stefan. I appreciate that. Uh, okay. And there's where I fix the audio. Beardly notice. Oh. <laughs> Luke Beal with the dad joke of the day. You beardly notice. Ten points and a thousand gold stars for Luke Beal. You guys are the best. Camera's upside down. I fixed it. Mike is fine when you're close. Awesome. Uh, just don't your... <laughs> Kyle K was another good one. Just don't show your face. Audio will be fine. That's, I try to not show my face anyway. I got a face for radio. Um, it's fine. Those people are crazy. Jamie says, awesome. Uh, all right. Mike is fine. Man, I'm far behind. FPV is friendship, says Stefan. Damn right it is. Uh, sitting back killed the volume, says Kyle. Cool. Uh, tell me it's not the same. No, Guillermo, it is not the same quad. This is a fresh build. Uh, two is one, one is none. Maybe it's a spare. Kyle, that is a, that is one of my favorite sayings. Um, my background in photography and, and videography um, is where I got to learn that two is one and one is none. Um, which for any of the non-initiated, if you're going on a paying gig with photography, videography, quads, anything like that, having two rigs with you is the same as having one because guaranteed one of them is going to fail. Um, and thus having only one with you is the same as none because if you only have one, it's going to fail for sure. Um, I'm actually more of the mind three is one and two is none um, because not only is one going to fail as soon as I show up, but I'm going to wreck the second one on the first battery. Um, so three is one for me, for my reckless flying, um, and two or one are none. Uh, all right. Prop Pirate. That's a great name. Hey, I value your information, technique, and skills. Pride in the world. You serve an asset. Thank you, man. Much, much appreciated. Very, very kind words. Um, I am trying my best. 405 stack is cabled together, not pinned. So good. Awesome house blog. Um, I love that manufacturers are finally doing that now. Uh, Mamba Mini 405, 38 USB on uh, RDQ. Check it out there. It's in desirable qualities. Very cool, Ben. I might actually do that. Um, just to get it. I mean, at, at that price, that's that's kind of, uh, that's pretty awesome. Having a really cheap micro is pretty slick. Uh, Mama Stack here for the money hard to beat, even the more money hard to beat. Uh, hello, do you speak French? I do not. I was born in the wrong country. Uh, <laughs> you guys got some great <laughs> sign-on names. 
her uh, screen names here on YouTube. Um, yeah, Tom Loreth, Jamie Ann is uh, Little Stellar Fox. Sorry, we're we're her and I are good friends. Um, yeah, it's Little Stellar Fox, uh, brand new uh, Rotor Riot pilot, an all around awesome human being. Note on pin stack says Yorando use bondic around the base of the connectors to reinforce strength in them. Very good point. Or epoxy. Um, you can build it up and it secures the PCB better than just the soldered pins. Very, very true. I have epoxied those and still broken them though. Um, just it, it, on when we crash at 50, 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, the number of G's that um, get put through these things is just ridiculous. So it'll, those pins will pretty much break anything eventually. But yeah, Strengthening the um, the pin header for sure will help it. I flight 1108 here, and yes, they get burning hot, but they, they keep going. That's good to know. Um, still don't like pin boys, says you. Uh, boys, great. <laughs> Your end says still don't like pinned boards. There we go. Uh, has a motor library. Yeah, Kyle, it's it's a it's a problem. <laughs> uh, Stefan, best 14. Oh man, the the scrolling on this chat just. Uh, best 1407, 1506 or similar motor for a four inch heavy quad. A four inch heavy quad, I would definitely not recommend a 1407 or a 1506. I think a four inch prop needs like an 18 oh something, 1806, 1807, or maybe even like a 19 to really turn it well. Um, Emacs released their four inch with the 1606 low KV. Um, I don't think that's, I haven't flown one, but my hunch is that's still not enough stator width. Um, but I, I think that 1606 would be bare minimum. I don't really think there are any four inch motors out right now. Um, uh, UG, UGP FPV, uh, best three inch props for the one and a half millimeter shafts. That's going to be the Gemfan 3028. They have a little uh, insert in them that actually allows them to work on the one and a half millimeter shafts. Uh, as well as the M5. Uh, these are the best I've found. The uh, If you want something a little bit lighter, the Emacs Avan uh, 3... Wait, were you asking about 3-inch? Yeah, you were asking about 3-inch. Good. Uh, the Emacs Avan uh, is also really good. It's not quite as durable as these guys, uh, but it's a little bit lighter, a little bit less pitch, uh, and a very interesting little prop. So either one of those are going to be your best bet. Is Armaton factory build good? Ken Simmons asks. I have no idea. Uh, my guess would be yes, maybe somebody else in here has built a uh, ready to fly from Armitan and they can uh, chime in. Luke Beal, when you want simply the best, what we consider top of the line regardless of cost when it comes to flight controllers, VTXs, ESCs, motor combos on a three inch freestyle build. Loving your channel. Thanks for the kind words, Luke. Uh, man, simply the best right now. Uh, in my opinion, is the, uh, well, it depends on the weight of the three inch freestyle build you're talking about, but for me, this is the best I've been able to do. This is the best flying three inch freestyle rig um, that I've been able to build. The Acrobat is, uh, Acrobrat is a close second, um, mainly because it's on prototype motors. There isn't a good motor currently available for the Acrobrat. Um, the prototypes that I have on it, are phenomenal and they will almost get it to this point but I still like this a little bit better mainly because it's lighter and quieter uh, this is a Cadex Tarsier which will soon hopefully be replaced by the Runcam dual lens um, setup coming uh, this is the Talon F7 flight controller with the MPU 6000 gyro uh, this is the Speedix uh, GS25 ESC 32 bit 25 amp um, very, very durable. These are the RCX uh, 1306 4000 kV motors. I haven't been able to tell the difference between these and the Emaxes, but just I've had really good luck with RCX motors in the past, and I haven't had the best luck with Emaxes. Um, so they might be the same motor for all I know, uh, but I prefer these RCXs. And then, um, you know, this uh, Ripper frame, of course and uh oh vtx yeah so vtx it's got to be the i don't have it in here um but the the tbs pro 32 nano is hands down the best micro vtx i've used if you're willing to spend 30 bucks if you're not you can get this ishin vtx 03 for 12 bucks from banggood um what else 
yeah, receiver is your choice. That's pretty much it for me. This is this is the best I've built. Um, all right. Nabi says, should I use a separate five volt regulator or the flight controller regulator for LEDs? I use the flight controller regulator. Um, I've never had a problem with LEDs, uh, but I've never put a ton of them on. Uh, so if you're putting enough of the LEDs on, you might want to use an, a, a separate uh, five volt reg. Uh, there's a tiny little one uh, that iFlight makes that you can get from the Rotoriot store. Um, which, I mean, Christ, you could almost just put this in line and not even know it's there. Um, and it's like three bucks, I think. Um, so I would definitely recommend this guy if you're going to do an, uh, an external reg. And that's the safest way. The safest way to do it would be with an external reg. But if you're not putting a ton of, um, if you're not putting a ton of, uh, LEDs on it, I don't think you would need to go that far. Just run it off the flight control. You'd be fine. Uh, what? The cub building little seller fox. No, what are you talking about? Get a burner phone. <laughs> nice. Just get a Google number. Oh, right. You guys are talking about my phone number. A Google number. That's a great idea. That is a great idea. I, although, I, with my luck, I wouldn't check the Google number. I could probably forward it, though. Yeah. Good idea, guys. Um, although, I like Noah's idea better of getting a burner phone. Because then I'd be able to tell people that I have a burner phone, whip it out at parties, and be like, oh, it's my burner phone. Hold on, bear back. Uh, Josh lives in Douglasville, Georgia, right by Atlanta. Never can find a decent place to fly. Josh, are you kidding me? There are places to fly everywhere. Um, just uh, come to Alpharetta and just drive around. And there's a thousand on the weekend specifically. There's a thousand um, office parks that uh, are just amazing. Uh, kind FPV. I'm making kind FPV hungry. Sorry. <laughs> Stefan, uh, is answering Ken Simmons. Thank you, sir. Uh, UGP is at Chipotle. Lucky you. RB DVR question. Does a Mitch, oh, here we go. Here's RB's, uh, DVR question. Does a mismatch in the goggles and the camera cause the, uh, the sped up footage look? NT, I think it does. Pal NTSC versus PAL. It also causes a um, it also causes the aspect ratio to go nuts because one of them has a little bit more vertical um, field of view than the other. Um, but yeah, I think it also does cause that speed up look, sped up look. Um, the other thing that happens is DVRs tend to drop frames, and that doesn't help with that sped up footage look. Um, DVRs and goggles kind of suck at the moment, which is really frustrating. Um, but I know that with the toothpick popularity that, um, that's, there's some actual, um, there's some actual thought going into the DVD, DVRs and the goggles, so they should improve, uh, in the future here. Kyle K saying the exact same thing that I did, depends on how many LEDs. Thank you, Kyle K. Uh, 32 LEDs, uh, Nabi says, yeah, I would run that off an external reg <laughs> for sure. Uh, just watched Tom Loreth, just watched Joshua Beardwell's stream. Awesome. Uh, thanks for sw swinging by, Tom. I appreciate it. Uh, consider extra regular without it works. We're out the regular. Yep. Good call, Kyle. Uh, Tom from the interwebs. I just want to hear something that's because I read a name. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, LED chicken FPV is LST Atlanta crew. I don't know what LST is. LST. LSD. Um, LED chicken. Let me know what LST means. I'm not great with acronyms. I'm old, guys. I'm old. You young kids and your acronyms, man. I'm almost 40. What gear do you use? Transmitter, goggles, etc. Mela Yella. Cool name. Uh, Mela, I have a QX7, an original QX7, $100 transmitter. Float around here somewhere. I guess it's in my bag. Um, and then for... Um, for my birthday this year, where's all my, oh, uh, it's in my other flight bag. Uh, for my birthday this year, I received a uh, pair of HD3s and a rapid fire, or wait, no, I guess I got the HD3s before my birthday and the rapid fire, for, I don't know how it worked out, but um, earlier this year, uh, I got Fat Shark HD3s and a rapid fire receiver um, which were fantastic. I wish I'd gotten them sooner. They really did make a difference in my confidence level when I'm flying. Um, so if you have it, but I will say before that, uh, for like almost two years, I was running a pair of, uh, same, same transmitter cause 
100 bucks, right? Can't get much cheaper than that. Um, but I was using Ishin VR007 uh, box goggles, uh, pro, I guess, box goggles, which you can see in my uh, Power Loop um, uh, Matty Flip YouTube video, which if you're not familiar with that video, I will put a link because that's uh, sort of like my crowning achievement in, in FPV. And how I met pretty much all the guys, how I met Joshua Bardwell and how I met um, Stinger Swarm and Tommy, oh my God, and uh, I'm forgetting lots and lots of people. Drew, that's the sound of that video in the background because I'm grabbing the link to drop in here now. Um, so yeah. The box goggles will totally work, but as soon as you have the scratch for fat sharks with a good receiver, do it, because being able to see where you're going really helps your ability to fly confidently. Uh, Nabi says, do you have five inch quads? Quite a few. Um, I, I kind of, there was a point where micros were not flying right and were really frustrating, and I kind of dove into five inch stuff because I also wanted to get into flying GoPros. Um, flying with GoPros rather, um, so I went pretty ham pretty much last year, that was most of the year last year. I just built um, uh, five inch rigs and flew them primarily. But nowadays with the stuff getting smaller and some of these dual lens uh, HD cameras, I am back in the micro world, people. Uh, Prop Pirate correctly says, Stellar Fox equals really cool person. Uh, Nabi, how should I mount my antennas for VTX and RX? Depends on the build, uh, Nabi. Tell me more about the build, and I'll give you some advice. Mackay, VTX06 was 12 bucks, 12 bucks last month, too. Yeah, they're really good, too. Isheen uh, makes a really good VTX. Who the hell knows why? Um, glad you mentioned Dual Lens run, run Cam came, coming out. Can't wait for a review. That's a good idea, UGP. If, as soon as I can get my hands on one, I'll uh, do a review. Maybe in a live stream, maybe I'll do an actual edited video. Uh, and the scrolling just screwed me again. Great. Uh, come on, scrolling. There we go. Uh, Nabi, in beta flight, what does LED low mode for? I have no idea. I've never heard of that, Nabi. Uh, Luke, thank you very much for recommendations. Currently looking at a new build for its three inch freestyle. Thanks a lot. You are welcome, Luke. Um, lots more good tech to come over on the Patreon page. Um, Ben Jacobs, H is the HGLRC forward 1408 uh, ben Jacobs, if that's the purple HGLRC, oh wait, no, that's 1408 you said. Uh, ben, the, the HGLRC 1407, which I don't know if they make anymore, uh, was a really, a really good, um, three inch motor for 4S. Uh, KV is a little bit on the low side. I like closer to 4,000, maybe a little over 4,000 KV for three inch props on 4S. Um, I don't know anything about the 1408s. I don't personally like 1408s. I think that is too much stator height and not enough stator width. Uh, but for a racer, that's what they want. So that's what most of the motors are kind of going towards for micros. Uh, Noah brings up a really great point right after yours about how notchy they are. Uh, yeah, those those racing oriented motors are tend they're going to tend to be really notchy, and that does not work right for freestyle builds because um, it creates too many vibrations. Josh, moved here a few years ago and haven't branched far uh, outside. Oh, yeah, man. Josh, come up to Alpharetta um, and just cruise around. There's a couple Facebook groups, a um, couple Georgia FPV Facebook groups that uh, you can join, too. A lot of cool people. Uh, Noah, Luke, Noah, uh, help me out. Talking to Luke Beal. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Uh, Tom Lareth. Damn, I just want to do an awesome beard joke with the Beardwell thingy. Nice. Uh, let's hear it, Tom. Ben, uh, how's the Rattel versus the Caddx and uh, uh, SDR and Turbo? Is there another cam that you prefer? Ben, I have not. The only Caddx camera that I've uh, used is the Tarsier. Um, uh, my preference uh, for five-inch rigs is the um, is the uh, Eagle Micro with an RC25G lens on it to get a little bit more uh, field of view. This is a $40 camera, unfortunately. It's big and it's heavy. It's like 12 grams with this lens on it, so I don't run these in micros. Um, for micros, I really like, uh, where is it? 
I really like this little, they discontinued it. Um, I really like this little Sparrow, Runcam Sparrow 2. They discontinued it and now it's called the Racer, the Runcam Racer. It's the same camera, same weight. It's really, really light. I think it's five grams. Um, and the field of view is really nice. Uh, it, the, the Racer is, uh, you can get it in orange or like a fake carbon fiber finish. Um, so I really like that one. But with the, the dual camera HD, uh, FPV and HD layouts, uh, that's going to be it for me. I'm not going to run another uh, micro camera until the day I die. Oh, maybe in a toothpick. I don't know. Maybe in a toothpick. Uh, okay. I think I might be actually caught up. Ish. Yes, I've scrolled to the bottom. Stay on your lawn, old man. Yeah, right? Uh, do, 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 do. Stefan says, have seen that. Awesome flying bro. I appreciate it, man. Freestyle build. Need durable and long range. Um, best batteries for 6S 5-inch. So I have just now uh, dove into 6S 5-inch, and I don't have a rig uh, on it quite yet. But uh, for the batteries, it's going to be the 1,000 mAh for me um, because I like lightweight rigs. I try to get 5-inch setups to... Um, to an all-up weight of no more than 600 grams. So for me, for a 6S battery, it's gonna have to be 1,000 mAh or maybe 1050 mAh to pull that off. Um, so that's really what I try to build. One more bite, guys. Um. The burrito is good. It's cold. Mm-hmm. UGP, what the hell is Mercalli stabilization? Oh, looks like it's a program. That's pretty cool. This is all extra hardware from, I don't know what, something. Let me give the, the folks with OCD a, uh, a thrill and a little bit of a normalization. It's not just you. It's not just you. So these are 20s here. And then we got, oh man. We've got 23s here. Got some 23 jams. I think that's what these guys are. And then we got some uh, 25s right next to this. And that's it. If I can't fit it on a 25 mil standoff, if I can't fit a stack under a 25 mil standoff, I'm either buying a different stack or buying a different frame because it's got too much shit in the way. Um, yeah, the 23s. 23 mil standoffs, you can only get them, to my knowledge, from a uh, pyro drone. Bob Rugi, Kebab, had these made specifically for his original 5 inch frame, the Flow Ride, which I'll give you guys some fun insider baseball on. This is a prototype Flow Ride that, um, so like earlier this year, I guess it was. He, uh, he, I think we'd been just talking here and there, and uh, he reached out to me with some micro questions, and for like a week straight, we stayed up for hours, like midnight till 2 a.m. kind of thing. He's on West Coast time, so he's a few hours earlier than me. Um, I just can't sleep, so I was awake. Um, he asked me a ton of micro questions, and um, I, when I told him that I actually didn't even have a five inch rig, he just sent me this. He, this might've been last, no, this was last year. My God, this was January of last year, um, 2018. So yeah, he sent me, um, a, a prototype flow ride that he had floating around and a bunch of extra parts and some props and a whole bunch of stuff to get me started building a five inch rig. Um, so you can blame him for me not having done more, <laughs> more R and D on, on micros in the last, you know, I, I was hot and heavy into it for my first like year or so of flying. And then I backed off a little bit, um, because Betaflight, uh, 3.3, 3.4 were kind of tough. 
on micros. But uh, yeah, this is actually a prototype frame. What's kind of scary about that is if I break this top plate um, or the bottom plate, come to think of it, um, that's it. There are no more. You know, when, when you get prototypes cut, you only get a few of them cut. And uh, yeah, so this is like my backup, backup, backup five inch rig. Um, last, basically like the last stand rig. Um, because yeah, if I slam something hard enough and, and break this top or bottom plate, it's over. I have to tear the whole thing down. Um, or just super glue and clamp them back together, which I can usually get to work. But yeah, a little insider baseball for you guys. That's the flow ride, and that's why the uh, 23 mil standoffs got created that Pyrodrin sells. Uh, right. Mella Yella asks, where'd you get the 23 mil standoffs? I was right, I was way ahead of you, man. Uh, currently testing. Okay, Mercalli. 1AH is a short flight. House blog, explain. A 1 one amp hour? Oh, no, yeah, one amp hour on 6S, though. Six cells of of uh, 1,000 mAh. Uh, ends up getting you three plus minutes, just like a 4S 1300. Uh, antenna, long range, and freestyle build. Long range, Nimbi, I don't know a thing about. I'm not the guy you want to talk to about long range. But um, I still need to know what size. What, what size uh, build? Do you, do you need some, uh, some antenna... Uh, uh, recommendations on 5 inch, 3 inch, 2 inch because it does depend alright uh, 12, what? 12 to 15 minutes on a 13mh 6s wow, that's really impressive um, Ryan Ferguson what's up, my man 3 inch fun freestyle rig could also carry a GoPro session at times uh, whew, would that need to be two separate quads i don't think so ryan i i think we're finally at a place with these um t-motor prototypes where uh, this particular rig actually could do them both um which i'm pretty excited about i flew this on these t-motors with the session it felt fat admittedly but it was totally flyable and if you're going to put a session on a micro build the only real reason to do that is if you're gonna fly Cinewoop style, more cinematic stuff. And this w did that really, really well. Um, so I think we're there. I think this is the smallest motor you're gonna wanna do that with. Um, I can't tell you what the size of this motor is here publicly, um, but uh, text me. This is, it actually it doesn't even matter though, because this is gonna be T-Motors F20 Pro 3. Um, so this is gonna represent the smallest motor that I think you can do that with. Uh, and really the only one, to be honest. Uh, the, the other, there are smaller, less powerful motors will do it, but man, you really sacrifice performance, and if you want to do a dive or something like that, it's really hard to dig out of the dive, so I think these are the ones, you, you shouldn't have to wait too long for these. Um, I would actually also do it maybe on an Acrobrat frame. Um, I don't know, we'll talk, man. Mess uh, uh, shoot me a text, we'll talk more when you're ready to do it. Kebab is amazing, says Robs. Absolutely. Very, very nice dude. You are correct. Uh, where do you get those textured standoffs? Five-year-old, five-inch frame. Pretty sure I can make it look modern by replacing the standoffs, adding some TPU antenna tube holders. House blog, um, everybody sells these things. RDQ, uh, Rotor Riot, Pyro Drone. Um, you can get them anywhere. That, that's where I place the majority of my orders through uh, Rotor Riot first because I like to supply, uh, to uh, not supply, to uh, support the pilots whose content that I watch a lot. Um, and then sometimes there's specific things that they don't have. I'll get that from uh, Pyrodrone. What else do we have? What should I soft mount to get rid of yaw twitch motors or flight controller? Never, ever, ever soft mount the motors. Always, always, always soft mount the flight controller. Great question. Uh, UGP, yes, standalone app use optical stabilization. So much better than others. Perfect for non core Wow, very cool UGP. I'm, uh, man, uh, I'm interested to see some content from that. That sounds pretty slick. Uh, Nabi, five inch. Okay, so five inch rig. What's up, Spudnik? Uh, five inch rig antenna mounting. Great question. Important question, because chopping antennas sucks. Uh, for the... Uh, this is my preferred setup. We've got the um, the receiver antennas at a 90 degree so that the nulls, so that you've got one null in the strong. So this one 
the radiation pattern like this is very, very strong. This one, the radiation pattern like this is very strong. The, the weakest point is where the, is where the antenna points. That's called the null. So the weakest point on this one is the strongest point of this one and vice versa, strongest and weakest. Um, so 90, you can also do that out on the arms, which works really well. Um, you can just put a, a zip, well, I have one. Here we go. Boom. Uh, you can just run a, a simple zip tie and that gives you pretty much a 90. Um, this is also really nice because the, uh, the thrust from the props pushes this down away from them so it doesn't get tangled up and it's just easy to do and it's protected when you go bouncing around, you never ever hit this. Uh, this, I ran this setup on everything for a long, long, long time. The only negative to this is when you're flying fast forward, um, it's not the highest point. Nowadays, I, I prefer to put them like this to get a little bit more range because when it's sitting up like this, flying, the highest possible point is this antenna. And that, that also explains why I run the video antenna at a 45 because video is, is the limitation, right? Like our, our control link is much stronger than our video. So when I'm at a 30 to 45 degree angle flying, the video antenna is absolutely straight up and down. It's a circular polarized, so it doesn't have much of a null up and down, but there's still a null. Um, but yeah, the strongest pattern is going like this. So this is gonna give me the best possible video. And then you just gotta, there's, you just gotta figure out a way to mount it. I have these kind of weirdo TPU things that came with some old quads that hold the UFL. Um, you're gonna have to figure out how to get this thing at a 45 degree angle as light as possible on your own because I have a very weird kind of custom unique mount that I do it with that I've never ever seen again. Um, but yeah, that's a great question. Antenna placement is hugely important. That's kind of the only thing I know about um, long range is that you have to, is that camera, uh, antenna placement rather, is like kind of the most important thing. Uh, what is this? More three inch builds, my favorite. Yes, bud, this is a, uh, a build that I'm, this is a little stellar, uh, what did, what did Jamie call it? An LSF three inch. Yeah, little stellar Fox three inch. Um, she traded me a bunch of uh, Lumineer 2407s in exchange for a uh, three inch build. So I need to get that done think of it so yeah let's get going on that I've been just uh, immersed in these wonderful questions from you guys um, keep the streams going says Ryan I will man you got it uh, when will the t-motors be available asked Daniel I have no idea they said soon uh, it, it kind of I guess it depends on whether or not they're going to make some changes from the feedback that I gave them to be honest with you um, but I wouldn't think, I would think this month, I would think September would be my guess. Um, one more bite, I lied to you guys. Ha! It's just turned into the mute FPV stream. So this is an M2 vibration standoff. That's what I was trying to show you guys on this. Um, Oh my God, there was a flurry of comments. Um, <laughs> UGP, have to say you have the best live stream, streams, love it. Thank you, man. That is super cool of you to say. Um, Nabi got his standoff smart EQ. Yep, yeah, they have them too. 
Uh, Reaper, good to see you in here as well, man. Appreciate it. RxSR. Cool. Yeah, RxSR is what I use as well, Nibby. So everything I just said was uh, totally applicable to you. Totally applicable to you. Your rando, thoughts on switching to 6S for 5-inch freestyle? I'm at the point where uh, it would be a good time to make the switch as I need new rigs and batteries anyway. Your rando, that's the moment that you have to do the switch, man. Do it. 6-inch uh, tracks the throttle better, uh, as I found out flying um, Jamie's uh, quad on Vanover Motors a couple weekends ago. Um, just like it, it just makes the throttle uh, lever feel lever great the throttle stick feel um, just very crisp and like like it knows what you want to do before you even do it so if it's a, if it's that time man switch do it for sure I was a, a 4s diehard until I flew that rig um, so and, and I don't I'm in a terrible place to switch but <laughs> I'll slowly do it uh, but yeah, if, if you're in that spot where your batteries are all blown up, um, for sure do it. It's, it's definitely worth it. Um, just be careful with your builds. Make sure you have enough capacitance on the builds and stuff like that. Um, cause it's easy to blow up ESCs and whatnot, uh, with success. Eating Smurf berries, I wish. Spudnik, Acrobat build you posted on Rotor Builds has a 4S 450. Ah, oh, I gotta fix that. Hold on, let me pull that up in a uh, in a tab, because that's not right. I haven't updated my rotor builds in a hot effing minute. I should probably update all of them, um, because things have changed. All right, I have it up on my second screen. Oh no, I have the 550s up there. The 550s do work. The 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 4S 550s are okay. Not ideal though. The the 650 is is definitely a better bet. I am going to update it still. That the 650 has definitely become the minimum um the minimum uh, I don't know. Words, 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 words. <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave that tab open. I'll do it when I'm not streaming. Um Sounds like Yoda, nice. <laughs> License to drive, I don't have a 3D printer. Um, it would be so nice to have one, but man, they're kind of big and it's like a whole other hobby and you gotta learn them and man, I just, I don't have the time for it. Um, Brent at BMC 3D is an awesome guy that um, if, if I'm looking for like something custom, he's almost always willing to, um, to, to make it for me. And then his print quality is so good that it's kind of like, well, if it ain't broke, I ain't gonna fix it. Um, I don't know what soldering iron this is. It's it's one that my dad got me way back when. It says, uh, what does it say? It says something. It's not special. It's it was less than a hundred bucks. Um, if you spend more than sixty bucks on a soldering iron, you're gonna get something that's that can hold enough heat and, and is going to be fine. Just get the blue and yellow Hako that everybody gets. That's that's this one. Or or the um, or the TS100. I, I really wish that I'd gotten the TS100 because that thing is good enough to be a bench iron and then throw it in your bag and bring it with you. Um, but if you're going to get a bench iron, just make sure you spend more than 60 bucks and you'll be totally fine. It'll, it'll get hot enough. It'll hold enough heat. Um, you'll be good to go. But yeah, like I said, my recommendation is going to be the Hako that everybody has. Um, Joshua Bardwell has a, um, a shopping list on his website where that thing is mentioned or just go to Amazon and type in Hacko soldering iron and there'll be one that has a zillion reviews um, so we just you know go with that one so um, it's been an hour and I haven't done anything on this so you know business as usual on this stream um, what I was showing you guys those little M2 rubber standoffs uh, was that if, if you have a build where you have enough vertical space um, or you have a, um, a flight controller that's not soft mounted or if you just want all the soft mounting in the world, put those guys below your ESC so that'll soft mount the entire stack and then uh, when you put your uh, flight controller on, if it doesn't have gummies, you still have some soft mounting. If it does have gummies like this one, you've got kind of double soft mounting uh, and that's what I'm going for here with this build for Jamie. I've never really done a micro build for somebody else, but I kind of realized when I was thinking about it that 
Um, I'm the only micro idiot insane enough to like just constantly fiddle with them um, and really just mess with the tuning all over the place. Since I'm building this for somebody else, I want it to be as hands off as possible. Um, and that means getting the soft mounting as soft as possible so that bent up props, banged up motors, doesn't matter, it'll still fly okay. Um, UGP. Okay, yeah, VTX. That makes sense. So let's uh, let's at least do something. I can't I can't stay for that much. Hey, what are we what are we going out? Oh, I gotta go out for the cats. Did they call? Me? Methadone. They didn't call me. Well, I wouldn't know if they called because it would be on my phone. Would it, wouldn't there be like a notification on your phone? Yeah, we'll just go at four. Th I think four thirty is too late. I'm going, oh, do we have some liquid left? Can I show you, can I show you and you tell me if you need some? Screw it, 4.30 we're going, how about that? Because we need to leave the house. I'm not done yet. Can you take a pause? Yeah. Sure. Well, I'm going, 4.30 I'm going. If you can come with me, great, if not, it's fine too. All right, so we got 24 more minutes. Get those questions in, people, let's see what I can get done in 20... Over under on me getting nothing done in this entire stream about building Jamie's three inch rig. What do you guys think? Uh, toughest frame you've come across, asks Prop Pirate. This one, um, the, the Rotorious Ripper DX uh, is it. That's the one. Um, there's probably tougher frames that are a lot heavier, uh, but with a micro that is gonna kinda cripple it. You really gotta be careful with weight. How do you build uh, quads? What am I doing here? What uh, what what now? What do I do? Do I uh, put things places? This one is like, it's partially built already, which is weird. I'm used to building them from scratch. Um, let's figure out what orientation I want the flight controller to be in. Um, yeah, it's not out yet, Prop Pirate, but uh, subscribe to the Rotorious FPV Underground Facebook group, uh, or just me, and when the uh, Rotorious Ripper DX comes out, You'll be able to get you one. It'll look very much like this, but with removable arms. License to drive measures the Caddis Tarsier to make model for designing mounts. Designing mounts. Oh, that's cool. Very cool. License to drive. That's awesome. Um, super duper helpful. What do you think about the Foxier Predator V4 and V3? The V3 is awesome. I'm sure the V4 is even better. Love the Foxier Predator. I have had quite a few of those. Uh... TPU BMC best case for the session five, I think so. Con Rved, Con RVD. Um, BMC 3D's mounts have um, our front load, and they have these nice flaps on the side, which if you ask them to, he'll make the mount two millimeters deeper so that these you can push the camera back. Oh, I got it. I got it battery strap but this camera will go back two millimeters and I can put a jello garden here and these little flappies will hold it in these they're melted because of me um, and he also puts this little lip on the top and the bottom too so when you go GoPro face first into something it really does a good job at, at softening the hit on the uh, GoPro session this this session is is old this thing is real old and it's still managed to live, I think, in part because of BMC 3D's uh, Brent's uh, front mount, uh, front load, rather, style of mount. All right, let's get something done. I need a Maytech F411 um, pad guide. Uh, let's see. Maytech F411 Mini. And there it is. And where's my guide? Come on, give me a guide. There we go. That one will work. Oh, thanks, Amazon. <laughs> that's funny. There we go. Oh, no, that's not big enough. I can't see that. Come on. Wiring, I'll put that word in there. 1700 KV, 2306 motors, great for 6S. I hope so, Nabi, that I have a couple coming, a couple of those staters coming to do that with my F40 Pro 2s. Uh, I think it is. That's the equivalent of 2400 KV 4S, um, which is kind of my sweet spot. It's not huge power, uh, but it's huge throttle resolution and it's enough power. Um, 
I think just all the power in the world makes flying these things so much harder. And for me, I just end up in the clouds waiting to come down for half of my battery. Um, so I prefer to kind of have a little bit less power, which 2400 kV 4S or 1700 kV 6S is exactly that. Um, so that is my preferred kV. And motor size, 2306. Um, I really like that motor size. Ah, here we go. Here's a nice big pinout that I'll be able to see. All right. I used to know this pinout when I put these ESCs and or these flight controllers and everything. But I've been cheating on the Matek F411s and doing uh, uh, Talon F7s lately. Okay. 2400 KV 5S 2207. Alex Dalton says, um, that is a very fun setup right there. I've done that a bunch. And uh, yeah, man, it is fun to have that much power. But it makes flying in technical spaces very, very difficult. Um... So, oh, here's a good thing for me to check. Okay. So this flight controller with all these wires already on it was on God knows what. Um, I don't know if it was on this same uh, ESC. So let me show you guys how to check that because it's always a good idea. Never, ever, ever buy a flight controller and an ESC and just, um, and just plug them in, in, in assuming that everything is wired properly. If the... Um, if the VBAT and ground, or sometimes it'll just be 5 volt and ground coming out of the ESC, is going to a motor signal pad, it'll blow it up. So absolutely always check it. Usually the ESC will come with a manual that you can look at what this pin header is. Um, I'm sure this one did, I just don't have them. But luckily, they typically will silk screen it. I wonder if I can do this. Let's see. Oh, wow, that works really well. Holy crap. All right, hold on. Luckily, they will usually, oh man, I'm a trendsetter doing this. Look at me go. They'll silk screen it on there. This is incredibly hard. So on this one, you can see from left to right, we've got negative, positive, and then one, two, three, four, right up there. So next thing you wanna do is look at where the pins are in the plug header. So in this case, the pins are on the top and then you take your um, flight controller, plug the breakout pin in. One of the things I love about the F411 is it doesn't have one of those plug headers. They force you to direct solder the, the motor signal wires on, which I actually really, really prefer. Um, it saves space not having that extra header, and it's more reliable. These plugs do not last forever. Um, so again, pins are on the top. Take my uh, wire from the VTX, look at it, pins on the top. Okay, so when the pins on the top line up, now we look at the colors of the wire. So we've got, again, left to right, we were uh, ground, negative, and that's our black wire, so that's good. And then we're positive right next to that, that's our red. And then we've got motor wires, one, two, three, four. Um, kinda doesn't matter, you'll probably have to remap the motors anyway, um, but as long as you don't have power flowing into motor signal, you're gonna be totally fine. Um, out of curiosity on this one, so signal four, is the closest to the grommet, so let me flip it back around. So so orange is signal four. So yeah, this one's actually perfect. This was probably on a build with this same uh, ESC. So yeah, orange, which is closest to the grommet here, um, is signal four, uh, and that's what that is on this plug header on the ESC. Uh, the orange is all the way off on the right, which is motor four. So this thing is good. We can plug this in without it catching on fire. Uh, I'm not going to run a capacitor on this because this is going to be a fairly simple, straightforward build. Uh, this is an RXSR plug. I'm sure that's still set up properly. I think Jamie says, I don't have any extra RXSRs. I think she said she does from when she switched from uh, FR Sky to Crossfire. So I'm just going to leave this as is. Uh, this, what camera did I have this on? That's a Runcam camera plug. Um... I have an extra run cam floating around, I'll put it on there. I think she also said she is, she has a, uh, a Fox ear, so uh, a fo an extra Fox ear micro cam. So I will, um, I will uh, wire it up for that. And then the VTX is already wired in. This is a VTX from UBAD actually, the guys that make the uh, LaForge. And uh, it's a little 200 milliwatt 
uh, MMCX VTX that's really nice. The only thing I don't like about it is it doesn't have smart audio, uh, which is kind of a bummer. But other than that, it's really nice, and I just mount it in a way that it's easy to get to the button, and it's MMCX, and yeah, it's good. I cut these holes out. It comes with these with it comes as a rectangle, basically. And then I realized there were no traces going through the tops, and I wanted it to fit between these standoffs a little bit better, as you'll see as I dive into this build probably tomorrow. <laughs> since I've burned. Since I now only have 15 minutes left. Um, but yeah, cool little uh, VTX. I wouldn't necessarily suggest it, because there's other ones that are just as good. Um, with Smart Audio, uh, hell, you can even get ones now that also have MMCX. At the time that I bought this, this was the only MMCX option. So let's see how I want to orient this flight controller. Um, as I've talked about previously, I spend a good amount of time figuring out which way I want to rotate the components to save space. Um, in the car world, they call this packaging. You know, you have a space and you have to package components into that space. Um, you know, with a car, it's a shell, right? The chassis of the car, the, the outer skin of the car is a shell, and then you have to package a million things in there, an engine, seat, steering wheel, all the things that are in a car. Um, I approach this the same way. I have an amount of space and I need to package things in that space in a way that makes the most possible sense, um, in a way that uses up wasted space, you know, so like an example of wasted space is this plug header, right? This plug header is the highest point on the ESC. Um, so there could, if, if I just ran a flat flight controller, I would waste a bunch of this space here. So the flight controllers will usually have chips, different chips and, and regulators and things sticking off of them. So I want to try to find chips and regulators that are going to stick down away from this to use this potential wasted space. That's kind of packaging for me. And that's, um, that's important for build, you know, like being able to repeat the build and, and repair the build and get it nice and tight and run the lowest standoffs possible. Um, so I spend some time doing that. Also things to consider like where your video wire is running. You don't want your video wire running right past the, the battery leads if you can help it because they're very dirty. They, they, they have a lot of electrical uh, just shit <laughs> going on. They can make your, um, uh, make your video go to hell. Uh, four in one versus individual ESCs, Nibi asks, definitely four in one. Uh, just adding more weight to the arms is, is never a great idea. Um, four and one is always going to perform better. Look at Steel. Steel was like the holdout for individual ESCs, and now he's on four and ones as well with the Apex. Um, that's pretty telling. Uh, run the camera from FC or VTX. It depends on a lot of different things. Running it from the flight controller is great if you don't get noise. That's what I'll usually do is run it from the flight controller first, and then if I get noise, I'll run it from the VTX if the VTX has the output. Some VTXs don't. Uh, got the call to go fly. We'll catch the rest of this later. Good luck with the build. Thanks, house blog. Um, uh, cap on a four and one prevent death rolls. Probably not. Spudnik. Um, death rolls are for me most often caused by a failing ESC or motor. Um, I doubt you, you never know, but I doubt that a uh, capacitor would help that. So in terms of packaging and layout, I've chosen to run this guy like in, in run this guy in this orientation with the power wires on the bottom here, um, putting the motor pads on the side. You don't have to do this. You can turn this like this, uh, turn it 90 degrees, I should say, to run the battery wires out the side. Uh, but just for me and for this frame, uh, I like the way that this layout works. So now I'm going to take a look at how to. Um, how to get this flight controller mounted. And what I might do is flip it upside down. Maytech has these gummies that are taller on one side than the other. Um, nah, I'm not gonna do that. Let's go. Maybe I'll switch the gummies. Maybe I'll, I have these same gummies that are not taller on the bottom. I don't think I really want these to be taller on the bottom. So the only problem with those rubber M2 Vibe standoffs is that um, you're forced to have a female side and a male side. And what that forces you to do if you run the, the screw upwards is you got to run some kind of a thick spacer here um, to catch the threads and then to thread in from the top on. So, I don't know. Let's see. Do you use a smoke stopper? I do. Um, 
TBS just came out with one that's both XT60 and XT30. It's like five bucks or something. Um, absolutely no reason not to pick one of these up next time you uh, next time you do a build. Jamie's back and there's no progress on the build because that's how I run my streams. I talk a lot and I say that I'm going to build and then I don't actually build. And then when I stop streaming, I feel bad that I didn't get anything done. And that's when I'll actually do the build until 2 a.m. And then when you guys come back for the next stream, there's a whole bunch of stuff done that I didn't talk about because I did it off stream. So, you know, we're, we're keeping to that. No, I don't want any surprises for anybody. I want to make sure that, you know, I just do the same thing over and over again. You guys can learn the format and uh, then, yeah. It does, yeah. <laughs> it does look exactly the same as as for weeks. <laughs> but I've had other things on the bench. I had to, I had my batting order all set up. I just had to get through it. Um, ah, what am I doing? I this is gonna be too tall, isn't it? Let me see something. Let me see a. Uh, is this a twenty mil standoff? No, it's a twenty five. Let me get a twenty mil standoff. You know, I might have done this because. The height of this doesn't... Oh my god, Spudnik. You're so very right. I need... Uh, what's what's the name of uh, Joshua's um, imaginary producer? Andy? I think. <laughs> Let me see. I might have done this because there's just no problem. Now, see, it's not going to clear a, a 20 millimeter standoff, so I need to get this stack height down. Alright, so that totally derails getting anything done with this. I thought that I... Um, that I thought this out, the way that I put this uh, ESC in here, but apparently I didn't, because having these uh, five mil female to female stand up, Alex, that's it, not Andy, Alex, yeah, I need Alex to come over. Um, so here's one thing we can do is flip the, no, I can't do that, I can't flip the standoff upside down because the frame's too thick. This is a, uh, a unibody frame, which Jamie at one point told me that she prefers unibodies. Um, so I figured I would use a unibody on this. The problem with uh, right now with the unibody is, you know, if you want a three millimeter arm, you get a three millimeter uh, center section as well, which is fine. That makes it invincible. Um, but for these very specific rubber standoffs, um, it only allows you to mount them female down and then you have to run your screw up through the bottom. Um, and then you run the, the male side upwards. So then what you're left with is a male um, uh, M2 piece of screw that you need something to catch, right? So you have to run some sort of a, uh, a female standoff. Well, I want to run a female to female standoff because I don't want plastic male threads because they'll just break. Um, so now I have to run this to catch it but then this is adding extra height, which the Maytech use, um, gobbles up with these uh, standoffs that are a little bit too tall. So I've got it. This will actually be a really neat troubleshoot and a really good packaging exercise that we'll do on the next stream because I'm now down to seven minutes <laughs> uh, to, to figure out how to get this dropped down, right? See all that wasted space in between there? There's no reason. How the hell am I going to get this to show up on the camera? There's no reason to have this much space, there we go, to have this much space in between these two stacks because I only have a couple wires running in between there. Um, so I need to figure out a better way to um, get these guys to kind of jive well. So one of the ways is going to be to swap these gummies out, and this is probably what I'll do, swap these gummies out for ones that aren't so tall on the bottom because then I can run the, sh it would basically be, I'm basically doing this because the top of these gummies is is the um, grommets rather is the the standard height. So if I if I put it like that, that's an awful lot better. Um, the other option would be to figure out a better way to a shorter one of these female to females. Um, hmm. Nabi built his first run last week. Congrats, brother. Good job. Keep it up. Stay stubborn. Break it, fix it. <sighs> All right, how am I gonna fix this? What do I have in the way of M2? Let's let's take that tact. What do I have in the way of M2 that's female to female? I have 
Nothing. <laughs> I have nothing short of Denise. Um... Huh. Yeah, I have nothing shorter than these. I do have these gummies. See what I'm talking about? These, whoa, where'd it go? It's gone forever, guys. These little grommets, see how they're small on the top, small on the bottom? It's probably what I'm gonna do. No! There we go. Yeah, so that's what I'll do. Um, if I use two nuts, it uh, it would fall apart. I'd put a nut here. I'd use one nut here, and then I'd stack another nut on top of it and screw a screw down, and they would just ah, fall apart. I need to I need to put a screw down like this. Uh, so the easiest way for me to fix this is going to be to go to these guys. And what's cool about that too is these particular ones that I have no idea where I found. I found these a long time ago. They have a little M2 hole in them instead of an M3 hole. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, let's use these guys. That should buy me the space that Jamie needs for this flight controller. Yeah, it's going to buy me like two full mil millimeters. See that, guys? Let's see. Let's see. The purity. See the difference there? So let's do that. I think that's going to get me the space that I need. Because I can't think of another way to do it without ditching these rubber um, standoffs, and I don't want to do that. I would rather have more soft mounting. Because, hopefully... Jamie will at some point turn this into an HD build with my help uh, when the run cam dual lens setup comes out and then um, then this will be really important to have these on here. Although at that point, well that's an interesting thought. At that point, the stack height will become a really big problem. Hmm. Huh. So that's interesting. Let's just burn the rest of the stream thinking. That's that's a great idea. That's quality, quality streaming right there. Um, but I will say this. This is why builds take me so long. I think through the build. Um, doing this quick fix, basically, is going to have this sitting so that it clears a 20 mil standoff, and that's fine. But... The day that hopefully she wants to turn this into a HD setup, there's going to be another board that's required in here. And that's now going to require like a 28 mil standoff or at least a 25 mil standoff. And these micros fly horrendous when you put big tall standoffs on them because you start shifting the battery like way up above the prop line. And then when you do rolls, it rolls on this funny axis. Um, and the and through the HD and through the FPV feed, it's just weird. Um, it's just a weird uh, rotation. It kind of rotates around a different axis. Um, Willard flew a, a micro just like this, a Wild Willie rather, um, at Rampage, and he could not get over that. He couldn't get over the the weird rotation of the um, um, because the battery was up a little bit higher. So that was an, a cool lesson to to learn from a. a a super nice guy and a pro pilot, of course. So, we might be ditching these rubber standoffs. See, they're very, I, I like them a lot, but they're five mil. And they have to do that so that there's enough rubber in them. Um, but, I mean, it's just five mil of space that on this particular frame you don't need. On like a on a pod frame without with without the front and rear where the camera is top dead center, um, you don't have anywhere like on these builds. I put the VTX back. The camera goes up here, VTX and receiver go back here. Um, so I have plenty of room for those components. On a pod build where you basically chop the front and the back off and you have to put everything in the stack, this would actually be fine with this five mil gap because I could bury the um, the RXSR receiver in there. The uh, the RXSRs. If you remove the pin header and directly direct solder the wires on, 
um, this will fit in a little five mil gap. But I, there's no reason for that on a build like this, right? I have a perfectly good spot here, um, so that would become wasted space uh, under those rubber standoffs. So I'm beginning to think that I'm gonna yank those and just hard mount this ESC, and then um, the flight controller has its own uh, grommets to to be the uh, to be the soft mounting, um, and that way, if I do that. I know from experience that I will be able to build a stack here that's only 13 millimeters tall. So if I slam this um, IS-20, which is the same as the GS-25, Speed ESC down as low as it'll go on here, um, and then I think I just put a washer on top and then just use these gummies as the spacers, total stack height here will be 13 mil. So think about that, right? We've got a 20 mil standoff, now we've got a 13 mil stack, that leaves us seven extra millimeters for the thickness of the battery strap. Never forget about the thickness of the battery strap, whatever, you guys have seen a battery strap before. Um, thickness of the battery strap and someday an HD board. Uh, so yes, that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, let's see how much we can get done in the next, oh look, negative one minute. Well, I have to at least do something to remind myself of this, so. Prop, pirate, you're probably already gone. If you're not, thanks for hanging. Um, you guys have negative one minutes for any other questions. And I am going to zip this apart real quick. If you don't have a driver that you love, I highly recommend buying Wihas on Amazon, W-I-H-A. These things are awesome. Um, Corey uh, Cricket maliciously stole one of mine. It definitely wasn't by accident. He, he on purpose stole my M2 <laughs> at Rampage last year and held it hostage um, from October of last year until like two weekends ago. And man, I was just heartbroken. It was just, it was hard to live without the, uh, without this little guy to complete the little collection. These things are awesome. They're cool too because this is kind of skinny so like you can't over tighten because of the fact this is hard plastic and it's not huge and wide. Like for example, right, the uh, these are great too, these cheapy ones that Bardwell recommends. I love these, but this big handle, man, you can crank the shit out of an M2 and just break it right off at the head um, with these guys and these don't spin as easily. This back cap doesn't rotate. Um, this one does, so it, it just kind of spins quickly and, and easily, and yeah, these things rock. Uh, so, much, much recommended. They have these black and red ones, and I think they have green and black ones too, which are really nice. A buddy of mine's got those green and blacks, and they work really well, as well. So, after I get done with this, I'm going to abruptly shut this thing down so if you have any questions fire away um if not i will be back tomorrow after joshua's uh america stream and i will just keep on riding his coattails into the wind i'll try to do this every sunday and monday i will try to just piggyback right off the end of his stream um so to get this mounted as low as possible what I'm now going to do is run one big long screw up through this guy. I am forcing myself to, so I, I talked about, I, I, I know I can get this down to 13 mil on the stack, but another way to think about it, I'm forcing myself to run 20 mil standoff. So as long as I run a, a bolt up through here that's less than 20 mil, I'm not gonna have any issues. So like an 18 or a 15, in this case, I'm gonna run a 15 because I know that I can shrink these down to 13 millimeters of stack height from having done this build before. A lot of numbers I know, but hopefully they make sense. If not, ask me. Um, here's the other thing. This base plate is three millimeters, so I lose three millimeters on this base plate. So I actually don't want to run a 15. I need to run an 18 or a 20. I'm probably just gonna run a 20 because I don't know if there are M2 by 18. I think it goes 15, 20, 25. Don't quote me on that. I believe this is the 20. And it is. So, three of these 20s coming up. One, two, three. What did I say three, four? Four. 
Strange. Don't get old, boys and girls. Strange things happen. Your brain just... It just stops working right. It's ridiculous. You are certainly welcome, son at... Sun at the beach. Plasma. Thanks for the kind words as well. The cat stole my wife's pen. That's what's going on over here. In case you guys are wondering. Oh, well, that's interesting. <gasps> oh. This ESC will take M3 hardware. All right, well, yeah, now I just completely, now literally zero progress because I'm gonna go to an M3 screw. Um, nah, nah, I can get that done. What time is it, 4.35? Yeah, yeah, we'll get that done. We need a, a, an M3 by 20, and I think I have that marked. I don't have a mark, but let me just find it real quick. We're going M3. I love to go M3 on the stack mounting because they're more available and the grommets work a little bit better, which I will explain in a moment. Uh, so the grommets that are on the flight controller to take care of the, this is also good because I'll be giving Jamie something with a couple less M2 um, pieces of hardware. Actually no M2 hardware other than the motor screws. Which is kind of a pain, that's one of the pains in the ass when you start to get into micros is that they use different hardware. They use M2 instead of M3 hardware. So you gotta, you gotta get like a whole new hardware set. It's just a big, big thing. Um, so let's get this out of here. You move out of the way, little fellas, little M2 pains in the ass. And yeah, yeah, I got like one more minute, guys. Uh, I'm going to put this here, I'm going to take this, go like this, put a washer below it first actually, hang on, and we'll see how low we can drop this thing. So this is just going to be a flat uh, M2 one millimeter washer, now nah, you know, I won't do that, I'll do nuts, I'll do M2 nuts, uh, M5 to M2, yeah. Well, I'm going to do an M2 nut right now. We'll see what kind of clearance that gives. And then we'll be done. Guillermo, you came back just in time for me to leave. I have to go pick up um, medication for the kitten. His pain meds. His methadone. Uh, from the vet. They close at 5. And it's 4.37 here. So I'm desperately trying to get this threaded. And in about four seconds, I'm going to give up on this and just go. Because it's just not threading. You goddamn bastard, get in there. Luke, thank you, man. Much is kind words, kind words, kind words. I really appreciate it. Um, and I will keep it up. You guys will force me to keep it up. There it is. Got one threaded. Let's see where it sits, and I'm out of here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Go, 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 go. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Ah, come on. And they, they got, you, you told them about the liquid, right, honey? Okay, cool. So there we go. There's an M3 on there. Let's see if that's too much or not enough. The other thing I love about the Speedix GS25 is it is drilled M3, uh, which is just terrific. Oh wow, the nut. Is the nut not enough? No, the nut's gonna be perfect. Okay, yeah, it's not sitting down right on there, but that's okay. Yeah, the, 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 M2, the M3 two millimeter tall nut is gonna be perfect. It's just hitting one of the, uh, it's hitting one of the fets, and that's, that's annoying, but that's, we can get around that. Oh, God, is that annoying. Um, we'll deal with it on the next stream, boys and girls. 
I will leave this squid for you here, just kind of hanging out. And uh, next time we'll make some actual progress on this. Thanks for hanging out. Let me give you just another one second of the the mangled beard. Oh, you guys probably can't hear me now, so I'll put it closer to myself. I learned that last time. Thanks for hanging out. My name's Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. Uh, I will be back tomorrow night from 10 to 12, and we'll get some actual work done on this. And uh, in the meantime, hit up my Patreon. Let me see if I still have it. Of course not. Uh, hit up my Patreon if you like what I'm doing. Uh, you guys are what's going to keep me going on this. If there's people giving me money, I won't just disappear into the ether. I will keep going with cool and fun content. And here comes the link. Boom! There you guys go. Thanks for hanging. Talk to you tomorrow. Later. Zip. Zip. Whoop. And end stream.